Today I have the results of my DaVinci Resolve mini contest. Overall, more than 100 people signed up to this free contest and at the end I received 30 submissions. First, let's have a look. Here you see a short compilation of some of the entries. Just to remind you of the rules, everyone here used the same photographs provided by nature and fine art photographer Sebastian Worm. And then everyone used only the tools within DaVinci Resolve to create some animation from it. Overall, I'm very happy with the submissions. Of course, there are completely different uh, skill levels and different approaches involved. Some look a bit more polished than others. Some show some problems here and there. Uh, that's all fine, but I watched them multiple times and in pretty much every submission, I found something where I thought, oh, that's cool, or this is something I haven't thought about. This is really the best I could hope for for, for such a contest, that in every submission there's really something um, worth looking at. It also made it very hard for me to choose the winners. Nonetheless, I have chosen, but before I announce those, let me discuss a few submissions that I found very interesting for different reasons, either because they were very close, so you can consider them runner-ups, or because there was some element that I felt was nice pointing out. First, let's look at this one here by Harsh Swami from India. And what I really liked about this is that it overall looks extremely consistent. So he's going for this old style VHS look and he's executing this in a very consistent way. So if you think about it from beginning to end, the titles, the chosen font, the size of the text and so on, all reminds me of these old style VHS looks, including like the disclaimer at the beginning, like these video rental disclaimers. Now, Technically, this is just some, some titles and then you can use an analog damage uh, OFX effect, which can, can create you this basically, or you could use some uh, film damage effect and some, some other pre-built effects to, to, to create this. In addition, maybe a little bit of chromatic aberration for the title or choose a title effect, which uh, gives, that, gives that style. And yeah, so not super complicated, but overall it looks consistent. Next, I want to point out this submission from Igor from Ukraine. This is a submission where I feel that every single photo that he used, he animated in a way that it feels almost like a video. And I think that's a good skill to have and that's why I want to point this out because when you're working on documentary or if you have archive photos or otherwise need to include photos and video, then this is great. Now in the first part we have this sunrise here, which you could basically create with a lens flare or a hotspot infusion and then in addition some cloud movement. Now the cloud, um, I feel they are moving a little bit like upwards rather than over me and that's probably something that you could fix easily. I think you can get cloud movement, you can simulate it with a corner pin if you just have the sky and then have corners and move the corners a bit and probably you need to move the corners not so much upwards but more a bit like outwards or perhaps a little bit upwards and outwards so that it looks like the clouds are coming over you rather than lifting up. So that's the only thing I would mention on this one. The next shot he includes is this sheep, which I feel works really well. It's just a bit of movement on the ears and on the grass, but this subtle movement is to me enough to get an idea of, of this being a video. Now you could do more, but you know, just some subtle movement of the grass, which you could do with a bit of you know, animated grid warp or warper effect or uh, other ways. Um, not much, but it kind of works for the purpose. The next submissions I want to show you all uh, are more involved from a compositing side, have more, uh, somewhat more sophisticated effects in there. Um, so if you're more starting out on the beginner side, perhaps you see some things uh, to aim for. And let me start with this submission from Hilaman Frias. I hope I'm saying that right, from Chile. And he is showing, I think, some of the most sophisticated fusion and compositing skills uh, within this contest. There's certainly some, some really great effects in there, actually so good that for a second I wanted to check if really everything was created in fusion, but yes, it was. And he combined different shots into a small uh, mini story, and I think that has worked out really well. So let me point out two shots. For example, this one here, you see here we have like a spaceship window created with a polygon and then uh, it's, it's bleeding over like the black 
line showing like a window with just a bit of softness and then we have this particle uh, fire effect in front of like a, a blue sphere and you know there's really a lot in there in terms of 3D fusion work and it looks looks really great uh, like especially this one but also the text if you analyze it you see much more than you would initially suspect for example you know there's a watermark there is depth of field in in 3d there's some 3d camera movement you see it's um, more blurry here than here and the vignette on top and so on so it, it really feels like a camera looking on text so these effects are really great the only difficulty that i had with this shot is i thought long about how do i compare this in a fair way with other submissions because I could easily say the compositing work here is really really excellent uh, but then again the best work I see in this submission are in the shots that are built from scratch without using the photographs so there are shots here that use the photographs um, like like the initial shot here and these actually show some problems I feel or well that's also subject to interpretation but here for example we see a relatively strong key on the tree which removes like most of the leaves i don't know if that was intentional i'm not entirely sure why um, it was done that way so comparing with the original image you know that wasn't necessary in my opinion but what i feel is that those shots that use the photographs this one also this one the sky replacement with the alien planet um, those are less involved than the shots that are basically independent of the photograph. So even though they contribute to an entire story, this text effect here, for example, uh, you could build it independently, you could reuse it from a different project or reuse it in the future. And if you create something like this from scratch, of course, you're free to do whatever you can do and um, you know whatever you have and whatever your skills are. And it's, it's nothing bad, it's, uh, it's great. I love seeing that, but it's very difficult to compare with someone else who only used the photo and was restricted by the photo, right? One more shot before I come to the winners, this one here from Patrick Goethals from Belgium. And this one I wanted to point out because it feels like one of the most artistically elaborate and consistent projects. So he completely embraced that sketch effect, everything in black and white from beginning to end, except for one minor color addition in the particle dissolve that you have here. And I think that looks uh, really great in itself. Um, and you see a lot of it is not super complicated. So we see the different image planes. You could do it in 2D or you can do it in 3D with 3D image planes. You see the mountain just being assembled and it's mostly just about finding an artistic flow in how these images are being assembled. And I think that was just, just a great concept and great design. And if you see at the end where everything like folds around, that to me looks looks really really awesome it's not super complicated if you think about it you have two mountains which are just moving away and then a third one in the back which folds up like a 3d image plane or you can do it with a dve effect even in 2d and then the the swan which uh, is probably an image plane which is uh, has some displacement on it with a like noise displacement or similar to have it displaced like a mountain and yeah, then it's more, I think, about having everything fit together and getting this feeling of the scene actually folds in on itself and does that in an interesting way. And I think that was really, really successful here. Now, Patrick, if you still want to work on it, just a few minor points, but really, really minor. So I see, for example, here, this line here on the side from the image plane. So you, you can just mask it out or maybe add a key to have it completely black here behind. There are also some things I felt when I saw this, I felt that this mountain should perhaps fit in here and you could probably arrange it so that it exactly fits in here. Maybe make a hard line here or something with a, a mask so that it completely fits together. Um, so there, there are these like minor things that you could fine tune if you want to, but overall I really love it. Unfortunately, I received this after the submission deadline, so that's why I cannot include it for the prices. Sorry about that. Now, I already mentioned two submissions that could easily be in the top category and for the next three, I found it equally hard to decide like which one should be one, two or three and there's a little bit of luck involved as well. For the third place, we have Matt from the UK who is sharing with us flying sheep. Now, this was 
when I saw this, I immediately knew this had to be somewhere in the top because it's just creative, you know, take the photos and do something completely different. Uh, we are here on some alien world. This was the original picture, right? So some color grading sent us in a different world and having uh, the, the idea of adding rings to the sheep that alone is, um, I think, very creative. And there are also a lot of like fine details. When you look at the beginning, you see that the hair are a bit animated, the eyes are blinking, we have some, some um, breath effect here and so on. Um, then of course the rings, they don't really look like photorealistic sheep rings, however those might actually look like, just from the bird, you know, cut out a bit, corrected here. But even there, there's quite a lot that goes into this and, you know, you see some like some motion blur on the side and some transition here and, you know, keyed out a bit. Now on this side, it's maybe not, not absolutely perfect. Um, you know, maybe it would be, be easier to have a bit more of the fur color, like paint it on or clone it on or something like this. Might, might make the transition here easier. But then again, there are obviously restrictions when taking a 2D ring and attaching it on a sheep. So congrats Matt on winning the third place and you as well as the second and first place can choose one of my courses or seminar and I will give you free access. Coming to the second place who will in addition receive a fine art print that you can choose. I'll contact you about it. Number two is Zizzo from Greece and here I feel we see both a uh, a nice story like with the cinematic opening and closing at the end as well as really nice effects that really fit together as well and go around this story of you know sheep and uh, leaves uh, around in, in one, one concept here. I really like the variety that I see here and I like the fact that it still feels like like one story. So we have the particle effects, we have some uh, modification here on the stars, then we bring the sheep in from a different picture. So in, in all of these there, there's compositing with multiple images and with particle effects, then, then this additional warp effect or this um, yeah blowing up pulse kind of effect, which is really great. The only thing which if you still want to work on it, what I would suggest, I'm not 100% convinced by this, by this iris um, type of transition and by the, the color switch to the background, but that's maybe more an artistic discussion. I would rather try something more seamless because these leaves here, presumably they are the leaves, they are somehow related to the leaves that are flying around. So I would love to either see two or three leaves, you know, flying to the front and maybe use that as a transition or perhaps have some form of zoom transition, like going to the tree and somewhere at the tree we still find this, perhaps, if that's the idea. Or some transition where perhaps the background changes more because the color of the background is kind of close but not exactly the background here. So either I imagine these leaves being in the same scene, then I would assume the same background color, or I assume that this is something completely different or somewhere else but then it's also pretty close, so it confused me a little bit, but nonetheless the effect at the end is, is really great. So just having this single leaf which was included in the package, you know, placed all over sphere and animated in that way, so the placement, for example, replicate 3D, you can do, you can do particles, um, so that's quite sophisticated and then also the, the animation of the individual particles here, that's, uh, yeah, that looks, looks really great and certainly one of the most sophisticated effects here. Also the color switches here and as you see as this is folding in if you go frame by frame a lot of detail which works out quite nicely. And now to the winning part we have this submission from Tai from the US and Tai created three completely different shots in his submission and each shot has a different style and some completely different approaches, uh, which I liked. And each of them is quite sophisticated, actually more sophisticated than you might think at first glance. But what certainly convinced me most, to put it up front, are the birds here, because they just look so adorable. I mean, 
how could I not consider this somewhere in the in the top category when seeing those those cute birds, right? So just blowing up the head makes it like cartoonish and putting it above a sun. So if you're wondering, yes, that was also completely done in fusion. So the sun here was, I think, um, I looked into the flow. I, I don't remember exactly, but it was a, a noise basically um, with a glow and a radial um, rays. So you have the rays effect in, in fusion where you can make things glow and uh, just a sphere that's that's glowing basically. Really cool, but you also see like every bird is moving individually and they are not just moving with the wings, but they move left and right in a subtle way. And those kind of subtle effects really, really can can help even for a cartoon-like shot like, like this. Um, so really great. Uh, only thing, if you wanted to do uh, one more pass, then I would try to make the edges here a bit more consistent. So there's a bit of flickering on the edges, which you can probably get rid of. The other shots are also great. So here we have this kind of abstract um, space stars shot based on, well, based on Northern Lights, right? Likewise, at the end, completely different style, more like a motion graphics style element, I would say, that you could, could use possibly in other video projects. Um, and this was uh, again, at first I thought just three pictures on top and just a bit of zoom effect, but there's more going on, right? So there's some distortion going on, which you can clearly see and which is also uh, matched and then the shadows of the frames on top and so on. So even, even this one, which alone would probably not have been in the top category, but uh, even this has a bit more than you might think at first glance. And uh, with this bird and all of the effort combined, that's what ultimately made it the winner. So congratulations, Ty, and I'll reach out to you and you will receive, in addition to the other prizes, a studio license from Blackmagic Design. Again, congratulations to the winners and actually congratulations to everyone who participated because I have really seen a lot of good elements, good bits here and there. Some submissions are really great overall. Some include still some very interesting aspects where I can see that people put really a lot of effort into it. Uh, so thanks for that. I really hope that it was also a learning experience that you really use this opportunity, you know, to push yourself creatively in a slightly different way than what you usually do in your day-to-day -day work. So that's what this contest is most uh, importantly about. Once again, thank you to Sebastian Worm for providing the still photographs for this contest. If you love them and if you want to see what other things he is doing, I will put the link to Photoromia, his presence, into the description underneath. And also thank you once again to Blackmagic Design for providing the studio license for this contest. Thanks for that. And again, thanks everyone for participating. And See you around in another training course or tutorial. Cheers.